We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. This unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 Madeo. Well, go on. I want y'all first stop what y'all doing. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But first of all, go to our Patreon channel. That's where you see our full length interviews and our YouTube membership. If y'all can't stand when he be chopping it up, clipping it up and stuff like that, y'all just want to see the whole full interview. He put it out right before he started clipping. So if y'all want to see it, just go sign up for our membership and y'all can see the full length interviews right away. You see, she throwing me under the bus. She telling everybody that I'll be clipping it, y'all. I don't know. You know, it might be me or maybe somebody work for me. I don't know yet. But uh, yeah, y'all just, I tell them not to clip it. I'm trying to stay out their way. Check it, man. Hey, man, Smooth Vega. It's been a year, man. Smooth Vega back in the building, man, on Boss Talk 101, man. What's been going down? Man, a whole lot's been going down, but you know what? First and foremost, congratulations to you guys. Y'all have been working. You guys have been consistent. I, I just saw the, the introduction she just did, and I just smiled from here to here. I'm like, oh, this sounds so good. She's <laughs> in it every single bullet point right on the money. Patreon, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, OnlyFans, you name it. <laughs> Boss Talk is on it, baby. Boss <laughs> hey, we there. Man, yeah. listen, no, man. Salute for real, though. Thank you, man. You guys are killing it, man. Man, and, and you know, like I said, we come in this thing kind of, we had never done this before, and and to be able to, you know, make some type of motion in it was just spectacular. We were just simple business owners, you know. We've been business owners for years, so yeah. that's something that you know we look at and it's like, dang man, like we never seen this coming. We never knew this was going. But you know what, man? You become addicted to content creation, and when you get to that point where you start creating content, and in this case, you guys have a podcast, and you guys are able to tell stories, not only your own but your guests' stories, like mm -hmm. to have people that you grew up listening to and watching on TV, people like Ice T, for example. Like this wow. is that that right there. Like who would have thought? It, right? right like and so it's it's amazing and i think it becomes addicting and it's like yo you know inject more of that in my veins you know what i mean like, <laughs> let's get back to it but man again congratulations to you guys you know, you guys have over 100,000 subscribers. I'm sure y'all got that YouTube plaque somewhere in here, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know we definitely saying? got the plaque. Got and the plaque. That's when you know it's official like a referee with a whistle. Yeah. A lot of people got 100,000. I've never seen a plaque. I pulled mine out. Look me up. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> what I mean, bro. Like, and, and that should be a goal for everybody as a creative to see somebody from, you know, from here, from the DFW. Um, it's inspiring so congratulations to you man, guys. I'm you happy so to much. be back here you know what I'm saying man you always welcome man I told you that once we lock in you locked in but it's hard if you're on the outside looking in and you don't Absolutely. know because at the end of the day it's like we watching what we do we pray about the things that we, we act upon to make sure we make the right decision with what God has blessed us with for sure. So you know, it's just a it's an honor and a pleasure to be have you back on the show. Uh, I'm gonna be real, which I got beef with you though. Oh, uh, you brought my name up on beef? an interview. What's beef? Beef, beef is when you roll no less than thirty deep. Beef is what? what uh, beef is when I met you. Beef is when you got need to get. Remember I was singing it the other day. Yeah, I got I the know. song down. That's Biggie. I know, beef, but I don't know. Is, he know it. He know it. Like. I'm a remix that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> beef is when you mentioned E in the interview. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> no, I remember. I remember playing when I done it. I didn't even think nothing of it, but you was right. Kind of like I really did say that. Okay, you being a Hispanic guy, being a, I don't know if you want to be called Latino, Hispanic, Mexican. We done had people work here. They got on me all different kind of ways. <laughs> I can't figure that out anyway. I would anyway. think the safest thing to say is Hispanic. You think so? That's the safest thing you to think say. So? You know what, man? I'll be honest with you. I think no matter how you categorize it or like in terms of our culture, however you say it, like you're never going to get it right across the board, <laughs> right? Because you could call somebody like, hey, you Mexican. And I'm like, man, I'm Puerto Rican. You know what I mean? So like to me, Latino is pretty much the generalized term. Okay, so Latino. Okay. Uh, but, but isn't Hispanic, even if you're Puerto Rican, you're still Hispanic. Yeah, no, but I don't know why people get real sensitive to the the way that it, you word it, and so I've mm -hmm. never been one of those guys. Like I understand, like look, I'm I'm a brown guy, you know what I'm saying? So you know, uh, and, and I wave the I wave the flag proudly though. You know, don't get it twisted. You know? Let me just get right back into it though. When I said what I said, I meant what I said. I stand on what I said. <laughs> I knew that being Hispanic, being Latino, far as the way our people sometimes look upon ourselves we are more prone to go to a 
you know, smooth Vega, you know, or, or if he's promoting something, they're not as leery because we've heard each other so much. It has nothing to do with you. Absolutely. It has nothing to do with you, but it's just because of the self-hurt, the self-hate that I've seen displayed in our culture sometimes. Yeah. But that don't mean we don't love each other. Families fight all day long, but if somebody else tries to jump in it, we whooping them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the Hispanics are the same way. Man, look, I said this recently. I said, you know, black and brown fight the same, a lot of the same struggles. And in a lot of ways, we're one of the same, if not, the, we are the same. You know, we're, we're both minorities and we fight different struggles. We both have endured different types of racism throughout the course of history. You know, that's just the reality of it. For me, whenever I mentioned you in that interview, it wasn't like I was angry. I was never angry I know at you. You, you would have known that I was angry at you. It was more so the point that I'm trying to make where I... I have heard that before, believe it or not, where when you talk about whether it's live events, whether it's interviews, whether it's whatever I've done throughout the course of my career, you know, when somebody tries to diminish it or say, well, you know what, it's, it's because, because of this, color. because of the skin color, it's like, to be honest with you, I've always felt like I've had to work twice as hard to get half the recognition. I don't get that. You know, I, don't, I don't get that because at the end of the day, the Latino culture have always came together and when they, they needed to. Together. And Correct. they always pushed each other up. Um, and I've never not seen that happen, so it's hard for me to understand that looking from the outside looking in. Okay, so let me explain it to you, right? So if we're talking from a culture perspective, mm -hmm. like there's this movie called Selena, right? And so Selena, obviously yeah, the iconic scene, everybody, singer, knows, everybody that knows Selena, right? But in the movie, uh, in the movie version of it, there's a scene where the dad goes, you know. We're too Mexican for the Americans and too American for the Mexicans, right? right? And that's a real struggle that we fight within our culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, me being someone that, you know, has operated and basically made a name for himself and established a business within the urban field, like an urban space, right? Like hip hop and R and B is predominantly urban. It's predominantly black if you want to be technical, right? No, no, no. Right. We we actually started it. Yeah. So that, that's that's the reason it's black, because we started it. You know, you can Google search it and it might say that Eminem is the number one greatest rapper yeah. of all time. But I'm telling you right now, we started it. We sauce it up without us It'll deplete. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, yeah. I mean, the Puerto Ricans were also part of the inception of hip hop. Don't get me wrong, uh -oh. those were always part of it. But, but in terms of popularizing hip hop, it goes without saying, right? right. It is what it is. Uh, so when you're navigating in these spaces and these rooms and you're doing shows now, all of a sudden, you know, the the Mexican Americans or the Mexican, at least the first generation that we now have, right? they view you as if you're trying to be black or you're trying mm -hmm. to not be Mexican. And you know what I'm saying? So like, those are some of the struggles we fight. But also when we're now operating in a space that we're really, we're visitors, right? I mean, that's the truth. No matter how much of whether or not we have common struggles, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a visitor in hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a visitor in R&B music. Um, yeah, I mean, those are the reason why but we, we fight we, those struggles. We you appreciate I mean? you for being in it because, like I said, you do a lot of promoting in the city uh, as far as Dallas go and the things that I've seen since I've been in in this realm. Yeah. I'm just glad to have you. I'm, I'm happy that you're doing something that brings essence to our culture in the city and as well as the brown, you know. Yeah. So it, it, black and brown alike, you come with it. They're going to show up in the room together. They're going to enjoy the show. And that's hard, man. No, absolutely. I mean, look, if you really want to be even, if you want to go a, a step further, right? Um, my goal was never to be boxed into being just a Latin promoter, just a Latin music executive or whatever, right? I've always wanted and I've always aspired to be more than that. So I felt it was important for me to go make my name, you know, create my lane, make all these relationships and resources, get it to a point to where it's strong and then I could bring it back to the culture, right? To the Mexican American culture, to the Mexican, to the Latino culture, whatever. But in the process, you're right. I mean, look, throughout the region, I've been doing live events now r consistently for the past 10 years. But, you know, you could make the argument last 15 years I've been doing live events locally. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked with a lot of national acts. You know, I've had an opportunity to be up close and personal with a lot of these artists. And I've had conversations on my platform and in general where I'm, I'm dictating conversations and I'm able to pepper in my culture in my own way but it's not it doesn't feel forced you know because like i said i don't look at race i don't look at color i get offended i don't even use the term black people i send you an interview somebody said that i said something i was like bro i don't even i don't look at it like that i really genuinely just look at the human race yeah you're a I, person yeah and i just i, I don't I, I wasn't raised that way you know what i mean like and because of where i'm from 
because of the neighborhood that I grew up in, like, you know, we're all one of the same. Like, we used to go to the mall, we were getting harassed because of the way that we, we dressed, you know, and whether we were trying to dress like the rappers or not, you know, that's just the reality of art. But raised you know? that way or not, me being from Jamaica, I wasn't raised that way, but coming to Texas, and being around people who they don't understand you unless you say that black person down the street, that's who I'm talking about, or this yeah. white person or this whatever. They don't understand. You say, Mr. Smith down the street. Who? You mean that black person? You mean that white person? Yeah. It's like they still don't understand because that's the culture here. So even although you're not raised like that, a lot of times people tend to have to have to use those terms in a lot of ways for people to understand what you're saying. And I wasn't always comfortable having this conversation. Well, you just better get comfortable no. with it over here in Boss Talk 101. I'm because fully comfortable. We're going to have this conversation because this is life, man. No, for and sure. every time I, I have, I pray for the show before we get here. I pray for the people that God's sitting in that seat. And the conversation we have, I feel like God is ordaining them. I don't care what people think. I know already they're supposed to be had. And if it don't, it ain't going to hurt us. Anytime you go to a council, like, you know, the women love to say, we go get mental illness health. You're really just having a conversation. You're dumping. You're getting these conversations off. That's what it's all about, man. So when we sit in these seats and we have these open discussions, somebody can get help through that. So no, I, I love it, sure. man. No, I love and, it. and I appreciate it. I think that's part of the reason why I said I used to not be comfortable yeah. with it. I'm very comfortable with it now because I understand my position, my responsibility. I understand that I'm a representation. And quite frankly, I'm a voice. Yes. I'm a voice for my people. I'm a voice to educate other people so they can understand, like, this is how we could coexist in this space. I've been able to coexist because I have responsibility respect for the art form i have I've, I've never like i understand what it is to be a vulture culture i've seen those people that do culture vulture shit you know what i mean and like Ooh. There's a few Ooh. people out there, Ooh. you know what I mean? I mean, you know, we, we sit in a room, and, 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 and I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but there are known people that they say this guy or that guy, big platforms are, are culture vultures, and I get it. But at the end of the day, a lot of those guys, just like yourself, have been in the game so long. No, for sure. They feel like they're doing the thing that they feel they love doing, but a lot of time in the fact of them doing it, it is exploiting our people. Yeah, and I'm not even referencing platforms. I'm referencing people on the ground level. You know, okay. people, other promoters that I've come across, other people that even do culture appropriation within their own culture, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to get the most out of it. Like, I, I've seen that, and I feel like, me, though I've been through my ups, my downs, like anybody else in the industry has gone through, uh, what I've been able to maintain is a certain level of integrity because I believe in the better good of the, 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 the great cause, right? Which is taking this to another level, you know, leaving this motherfucker better than what I found it. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I want to pay this forward. I want to elevate myself, elevate the talent. And in the process, if I happen to be a Mexican-American that happens to be a music executive, right? Because I don't want to be labeled a Mexican music executive. If I'm a music executive that happens to be Mexican-American and I'm the first of my kind, which in a lot of ways I do feel that I am, then I'm going to be able to pave the way for future executives, future promoters, and they're going to be able to have a reference that, look, there's somebody that looks like me, that I can identify with, that speaks educated, that doesn't, that doesn't, that didn't have to do all the stereotypical, hey, let me go wear a sombrero and dance at the corner and do whatever, you know, salsa this, salsa that, just to kind of get on. Like, I did it my way, and, and, and it's very possible. So it's important to have a sense of knowing what, responsibility you do carry when you reach a certain point and I wasn't always comfortable with that Man. are you bilingual I am hell okay. yeah no I just have to ask he, because yeah, he they... called me one time asking me <laughs> hey can you interpret this we have a plumber here yeah, yeah. I said see si, oh, si, si, no. okay. <laughs> let's check in because there's a lot of people here who are Hispanic or Latino like you say and they're born and raised here and they don't want to learn Spanish you know, that's true, and, and, and I understand that perspective. What I will say is, for me, I can't relate to that because I'm a first American, first generation Mexican American. Me being a first generation Mexican American means my whole entire family is from Mexico. Right. My mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunts, a good amount of my cousins, and you know Mexicans, boy, we are fertile. We touch you, you're pregnant. <laughs> We're knocking out four at a time, you know? So our, our family's big, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I was blessed to be 
raised in that environment. But to this day, I don't communicate with my dad in any other language other than Spanish. My sister, mm. though she knows English, I still talk to her in Spanish. You know, And I love that because I always tell anybody who tell me that, I'm like, you're robbing yourself because you have a lot of people here who are not Hispanic who would love to learn Spanish because yeah. we're living in a bilingual you know, state right now where if you're bilingual, you can get a job like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and the last like, corporate job I had, I got paid more because I was bilingual. Exactly. Yeah. And my, you know, my kids, you know, I have three kids. My oldest is 13 and she doesn't know Spanish at all. You See? know what I'm saying? And so you can it, understand when you speak it to her? Not little? even, man. I wow. mean, cause she was just raised American, you know? Uh, 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 I why know, you drop the ball? I know, come I know. on now. Trust me, trust me. And that's something that, you know, I'm having to, you know, come to the realization of like, damn, you know, like I want them to have a sense of culture. Right. To have a sense of like knowing like this is your roots. These are, this is, you know, but you know, it happens, you know, the evolution of, of our, our, you know, where, where we're going, you know, we, we start removing ourselves from that but mm -hmm. it is important for me to have like a sense of like humility and a sense of like knowing like this is where you're at like don't get me wrong like as much as I love hip hop as much as I love some of the things that I, I personally enjoy whether it's sports and whatever pro wrestling Re pro wrestling I'm a, <laughs> pro big, wrestling, I'm a big huge fan. pro wrestling fan correct uh, as much as I enjoy those things there's nothing like seeing my people on TV. There's nothing like seeing, you know, if I go to an event and I see people like culturally doing things that remind me of my youth, like it just moves me in a way that I can't explain. Let me ask you something. Uh, when you left here, I'm gonna go back to the hip hop. You left here and, and, and you, you, you know, again, you affirmed, you reaffirmed what I had said about, you know, y'all getting a little bit easier than us getting things done a little more. You ended up interviewing Bun B. I was upset about that because I had already <laughs> wanted the interview because I'm a big UGK fan. We kind of connected on time. I met him several times, as you know. Um, I know the interview's coming, but I just was upset that you got it <laughs> and that the camera looked so damn good <laughs> and that you set it up in this nice, I don't know if this was a warehouse or what, but it was so dope. And I want to tell you, if you're going to do it and you're going to, you know, easily get it done because they come to you. Uh, I'm just so proud of the fact that you knew how to convey it once you got it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like, is this a compliment yeah, or what? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, where is he going with this? I, know, me too. No, I, like, I loved it, man, though. I, I mean, but I just had to say it that way because I want him to know, to feel my pain. I didn't want him to get it first, but he got it. <laughs> and it's for, it's for the Rasa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, <laughs> no, it was. You it know, was it was hard, so funny man. because, like, it was... Anytime I get into a conversation, you know, and those that know my background, my promoter background, you know, one of the first artists that I launched my current company with, right, Premier Live Experience, uh, was actually with Joe Budden. So yeah, yeah. I, I did eight shows with Joe Budden over the course of like maybe 16 months. So I got really close to his management team. And to this day, you know, one of the guys that's on his team has been one of the few mentors that I've had in the music industry. So I'm close to these guys and, you know, uh, they were part of the reason why I jumped into podcasting. And in one of the conversations I had with uh, with Joe's manager, or one of the managers was, he mentioned to me, he's like, man, dude, if I was you, I would, you know, really, really lean into the Latin aspect of who you are mm -hmm. on your platform. Because, you know, I've interviewed people like Jay Prince on my platform and, you know, I've interviewed prominent figures, you know, and it, it, I could go down the list, but some of those conversations, though they were informative, and if you're a student of the game or a student in the industry, I'm trying to tell a story so people can learn, it wasn't the, the it wasn't connected on a broader level. It wasn't getting the viewership that, you know, we all aspire to have with platforms. The moment I started shifting and started going, well, you know what, let me do a little bit more Latin based content mm -hmm. within this conversation, because to be honest, who better, right? Like who could have those conversations, who can navigate those conversations in that way? I felt that responsibility. So when I got in front of a Bumby, whenever I got in front of a DJ Paul of 36 Mafia and we're having these conversations, because believe it or not, DJ Paul gave me almost an identical clip and it did just as good, but Bun being a little bit more prominent here you know, it went, and, and it, it, so when it went, initially it took off, and then went like three or four days ago, uh, it, it picked up again. It just went viral on Twitter last week. It did 10 million views on Twitter, like wow. yeah. literally a week yeah. ago. He said something on there that was dope about PMC and people using, you know, his, his, uh, his, his, his material, his legacy. His likeness. His likeness, and, and you know, and I, I felt him on it, you know, but at the end of the day, I just know that Man, pimp, man, he was impactful. He stood for something that was greater than 
anything that we ever experienced. I don't think we've even exper- ever gonna experience it again. Yeah, the way he represented the South. And, and it's hard not to get around him. If you're a true fan of the music and the culture in the South, you're not getting around Pimp C. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, you know, I feel a responsibility anytime I get in front of these guys that, that are looked at as legends that have a, a, a strong voice. I feel a responsibility. Like, what do I want to leave the viewer with? Because honestly, like, what different is it watching my interview with Bun than watching a Vlad TV interview with Bun or a Drink Champs interview with Bun or a? No, you gonna kill him. That's what different well, I mean, it is. No, let's hey, not play. Hey, you hey. come on, Boss Talk. That's what we. Come I'm gonna go in. This, this better be a prime example of it. Yeah, I go in over here. No, but, but at the end of the day, that's what we supposed to do in our own perspective. Absolutely. Like the way you do it, can't nobody do you like you do Thank you, you, man. And I can't nobody. Do me and Miss Jamaica like we do us Absolutely. and Money Moses when he come in the door. I'm just telling you, be the best you you could be. Ain't nobody gonna be like that. And, ju- and I'm not just saying this because That's hard, man. I'm not just saying this because I'm here. But like even right now, this conversation is probably one of the most comfortable I've been in quite some time. And because you know, because a lot of times you know you'll come in, it's like ah, uh, you know, I want to be conversational, I want to be able to be open. But with that specific situation, you're right. My goal is to okay, you know, this is what they're gonna do with it. I don't even want to watch it. I'm right. I'm coming to knock your fucking head off. That's right. what I'm trying to right. do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, but and then not even just that. It just depends on who you sit in front of. You don't know what their motives and how they're going to convey whatever you say and how it's going to come across because some people love that clout, love to twist and turn what you say into making it sound totally different from what you really meant. There's a piece in that interview, that Bun, that Bun interview. For those that are watching and that are becoming familiar with me for the first time, if you go back and you watch this interview with Bun B, there was multiple clips that went viral. You're right, the Pimp C clip, the clip about you know the Mexican American sport. Yeah. But believe it or not, there's a part of that interview that is my favorite piece of it that has gone really overlooked. But it's when he's talking about his wife and I and I, I when I spoke, she was there whenever we were doing really? it, oh. and she was filming it. But I remember I saw her and I said, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity to talk about the balance of work and professional life right Right. because it's hard to balance that and a lot of Mm -hmm. creatives that get into that space don't know how to maintain a personal relationship and and a career so i asked him and man what he said in that interview is so impactful to me that i feel like anybody that's a creative anybody that's an entrepreneur anybody that's in the music industry or aspiring to be in the music industry and has a relationship or it feels like they're battling with how to you know manage and, and and balance it um, they should watch that clip. So you Man. didn't clip it and put it put that part yeah. out? I have. I think I should bring it back now bring that I'm back. talking. I'm yeah. gonna bring it back tonight. I think I'm gonna cut it up. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because because it was it was real. Like you know because people don't understand. Like to me, that's where I I want to go. I want to get a little bit more personable. I want to get that those layers of somebody's story. Like yo man like. You know, we understand. We already know the UGK story. So, how many times can I tell it to you? You know, mm-hmm. like, you know, it never gets old. It never gets old. But it, no reason it never gets old because there's so many different aspects of it. I have so many different people that hit me up that I, I be trying to, and he don't realize this, and they don't know this. But I go down through like riding dirty. I'm looking at every single person that was on that album. Yeah, <laughs> super tight. I'm looking at all the different aspects of who was on that album. The first one, you know what I'm saying, and just just all the way through UGK for life. Like I'm looking at how they layered it from Steve B. Loader, all of those by a uh, uh, Corey Mo, all those guys, man, and just looking at them and just. Uh, you know everything about them. UGK is 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 that's Texas, man. Yeah, yeah. But not even just that. Just like how you said, how comfortable you feel by just sitting right here, and how people don't understand that just having a conversation, it brings back a recollection of something in your past sometimes that yeah. you never even thought about bringing up in other interviews because of how comfortable you might feel at this moment in time. Yeah. And just being asked a certain thing, you're like, oh, you know what? Such a, I never said this before, but da da da. And then you, all of you asking about UGK, you get something that nobody else has ever gotten. That's for sure. I think for me too, whenever I go in, because people ask me, and I'm sure you guys get asked the same thing. You know, like, do you do you plan your questions? And honestly, I don't. No. We go in there and we just we we we, we free flow. Chit chat. <laughs> I might have an idea just because you know we know. Okay, we're gonna steer it in that direction, but. I had already interviewed Bun during the pandemic and I did a phoner with him prior. So this was really my third interview. Okay. So 
I had already asked some of the questions like, hey man, Word on the Block was, uh, you were supposed to be on Tupac's <laughs> album, right? Or hey, Word on the Block was you and uh, UGK and Tupac had a song together. Cause that was rumored. I've already asked that. I could have brought it back, but you like I want to have yeah. a new conversation. And then right. also, you know what? Like we want to leave it open for future conversations. You know? Yeah, exactly. yeah. well you just never know where you guys are going to end up at. Especially when you, when you, you said something crucial, three interviews, you build in a relationship to where yeah. you guys will talk some more. And it's just a conversation really. And a real live conversation is something that you just talked about now. Like I mean, just kicking it, man. Um, you dope. Like I said, you you doing your thing, you know, in in order to set how was the you say you ate a trail burger yet? No, what I, oh no, I haven't. Actually, you know what's funny? I wanted you been to, a trail burger? I, I was about to flex, right? So this is funny. I did a show uh three weeks ago in Houston. Uh huh. Now, because of the working relationship that I've established with Bun from booking him for shows, which I have, you know, I've done a make a wish with him. Uh, twice actually where we granted a, a fan with special needs and a fan that was terminally ill an That's opportunity big. to meet That's him big. Um, and then I've interviewed him multiple times now I have his direct number so uh, I went to Houston I, I was texting him when I went out there and we were trying to set it up to where I could bring the artist that I booked which was K-Camp to go to Trillbergs but Time right behind me. Drake. Time didn't align. You hear me? Right behind Drake. Drake, Drake been, just left. Drake just left. You bring your guy through. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, a time didn't align. Well, God's going to make it all yeah, happen, know, man. Ooh. It's in God's timing, right? Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, if you would have told me 10 years ago that, you know, you'd be texting Bun on a personal level or even on a professional level, like, I'd have been like, no way. You know what I'm saying? So it's a constant evolution, man. And I think that's what happens with, even with you, you mentioned like, hey, man, whenever I started doing this, like, I couldn't have predicted that this was what was going to happen, but it's evolution. That's what we're supposed to experience as human beings, as entrepreneurs, as creatives. We evolve, and if we don't evolve and then we're not growing, then you know we're not going. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, I, I, I get it. Like I hear what you're saying loud and clear when it comes to you don't know you're going to talk to certain people. You would be amazed. I don't even tell. I've talked to some people. I talk to some people daily. I don't even speak on it because it's crazy, right? And, and it's like, wow, you know, like, you never would know that this is going to happen. And God is just like that, man. I'm a believer, bro. So I'm always throw that up because I'm always praying and, and nah. it happened. So whenever, when I pray and it happened, it's like, I got to go with that. <laughs> Look, man, I'm, I was just telling you right when I walked in, you know, and maybe it's because I'm operating on confidence today. Yeah. But, uh, and I am, just be honest with you. I'm offer right now, nobody could tell me anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like I've, I've, I've paid my dues. I've earned my stripes. You know, I've, I've, I've been through the ringer, you know what I'm saying? But this last week I was in Miami and I had a meeting with the VP, uh, Vice President at Interscope Records. I had a meeting with Interscope Records. Mind you, we had already had an hour and a half conversation prior to us having this three and a half hour meeting. So that's a total of five hours with the VP of a label. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we've all, I've also been having conversations with Capitol Records, with Epic Records. I've had conversations with, you know, um, with some pretty prominent figures on the West Coast that do the Mexican regional music. So, and it's all in support of an artist that I'm working with that, that I'm managing, you know, that is doing sensational things oh, What's right the name now. of this artist? His name's Louis the Singer. He's a country uh, artist, right? Why you didn't bring wow. him? Wow. Uh, because he's a, he's a full-fledged celebrity right now, man. You know, <laughs> you know, no, I'll be honest with you. He was in the studio today, but I mean, you know, I mean we'll get him through here. Yeah, he's, uh, when I tell you he's doing some really, really extraordinary things, it's truly an understatement. But never mind that, right? Because we could talk about that here in a second, but the fact that, Having those meetings, yeah, being in those rooms, being in those rooms, and and, and not only being in those rooms because me, to, I'm going to speak on myself and Louis as well. Like we we both have put in a lot of hours to get to that point to be viewed as an equal, to have our voice heard, to have our voice respected. And I'll be honest, just the best meeting I've ever had in my life. And wow. I'm talking about anything because we were ourselves. Uh, we dictated the conversation. We didn't compromise who we were, and we spoke fluently and educated in the in in this in this business that we've given our lives to you know what i'm saying and to be again someone of mexican-american descent you know i don't know anybody from my city or really from the general area that's been able to experience that at that level and maybe there is i, well, there I, I is. don't know there he is you well, know i'm just gonna go and let you know there he is uh and one of the guys you, you you put his name in your mouth and uh he's in those rooms just like you uh he's 
on your level, uh, y'all both neck and neck. You say that he could never touch you. Oh, uh, I rain said, water. I, I said Mexican. Wait a minute. No, 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 I, no. Said, you said, I said Mexican. You didn't say that. He was talking about his family. Well, let's talk, well, about, let's talk, about, talk about, about rain yeah. water. Yeah, like, like, you made a, some, a hard statement in that. De- uh, I watched that in mogul yeah. media when it came out because that's my boy. You know, uh, D- uh, you know that's D- how I met you. Hey, number so, six. So, hey, you, hey, he made me the number six. On the gatekeeper list. list. But I'm the just only saying. The only on the gatekeeper list. But I just want to know how you felt so strongly to make those strong remarks about you being the best manager and Rainwater could never, could never be on your level. Y'all both got a lot of similarities. Y'all yeah. promote. Yeah. Y'all go in these different rooms with these different uh, big labels. So uh, what makes you think that you're untouchable? Or was that Cap? <laughs> untouchable. You, no, you it was, said it. It wasn't Cap. I'll okay. tell you, it, it was a little bit of WWE. You know, it, it was a little bit like, look, brother, I'm going to face you in a steel cage match, brother. You know, like, I, <laughs> I was killing myself laughing. That was a good interview, man. No, I appreciate it. No, I mean, I'll tell you the thing about Rain. Um, I did it kind of to ruffle some feathers. To be honest with you, I was a little irritated with something that he did, and I spoke on it. But I, I don't really have an issue with him, right? You know, there was some because I have a relationship with Bump, right? Bumpy Johnson. I do. I like Bumpy. Yeah, Bumpy sure. comes over here and sing and go go oh, in. Hey man, Bumpy's special. You don't get it fucked up. Bumpy go hard. <laughs> uh, and I actually had a label reach out to me about him recently. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, Bumpy's aware of it. You know what I'm saying? And and we've spoken. And but you know, I was doing a lot of work for Bump behind the scenes and. He didn't. He never let Rain know that I was the one kind of navigating and doing some of those things. So there were some things that were mismanaged that I had to help clean up, and that I was a little bit frustrated about. So when I finally reached out to to Rain, you know, I was like, "Hey, what's up, man? Like, you know, I want to get you on my podcast, right?" Uh, you know, he stiffed me as I was going to be this much, right? I, he, he, that's yeah, the way he is. I know he is, and I get it. You know, I mean, I'm not tripping about it, but. I was like, man, hold up, like, you don't even know, right, that I'm I'm over here playing ghost manager for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you have the ghost writers that write the raps for the artists? I'm playing ghost manager for you. <laughs> I so, heard all that. Yeah, I, heard. I mean, so, you know, and I felt like, but even honestly, truth, truth be told, I'll tell you, here's a Boss Talk 101 exclusive. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, even whenever I was going to interview him, the plan was always to, like, Maybe it was for the viewership and just for the conversation. The plan was always to challenge him online, on TV or on screen, and be like, yeah. "Let's have a manager face off. You take an artist. Let's go twelve months head to head and let's see who has better results." I was always gonna do that. Did y'all? Uh, y'all no, no. I mean, he's reached out a few times. I mean, but I mean, I don't really. At this point, it's kind of like whatever. But yeah, I mean, but anyways. <laughs> but the challenge still there. I mean, if he wants to lose money. <laughs> you think, you think a okay, because I'm going to be honest with you. I remember this time period when this Bumpy mm-hmm. thing was going on. And I remember Bumpy just getting over there with him, yeah. too. So he really was locking in with you probably prior to him even dealing with sort of, Yeah, kind of, sort because of. Because that was early on. I know that was early on because of the time and when I seen the interview. Yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, you know what? Like, I don't really want to speak on, on the Bumpy situation because Bumpy is... He's kind of like, he's his own thing, right? And, and you know, he, he messaged me like, come on, Spool, you kill me out of that <laughs> shit, you know? Uh, but I, I hope he knows it was a little bit of theatrics, a little bit yeah. of fun. I mean, we all do it, but, but no, I mean, to answer the question or to not steer away from it, I stand by what I said. Like, I don't think he could see me, you know what I mean? But, but, right but that's, that, hey, that's what we all good. I ain't no, gonna yeah, lie. I mean, you, you, him, man, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, y'all dope, man. Low nah, easy. It's some dope, look, it's some I, dope managers, I'll man. Say, I'll say this about Rain, and, you know, because I felt like, uh, you know, I didn't want him to think, oh, he's using my name for Cloud. Because he went on this whole thing about how he has more followers and this and that. And then I started, like, because you didn't, I don't know if you were watching the shit I was actually doing on no, IG. Uh, uh, uh. Bro, I was pulling his numbers, I was pulling my numbers. I went on to like the social media engagement calculator. I was showing that I had a higher engagement so rate. So you real petty. Yeah, you I was, petty. Yeah, I was like, bro, you know, <laughs> something ain't, this ain't adding up. Somebody got fake followers. You know what I mean? So you say Ray got fake followers? I don't know about all that, but I was <laughs> saying something wasn't adding up. But no, in all honesty, like I will say this, like he's very influential to a community. And I can't take that away from anybody, because when even when we look at that gatekeeper list that D did, by the way, man, D didn't put one out this year. D, I think them niggas scared D, man. D running around here scared to put that list out, because you know they already told him, quit putting that list out. 
They don't want it out no more. People say, don't even put me on it no more. I think Sean Cotton say, I'm done with the list. He uh, retired him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Jay Prince, they don't want to be on the list no more. You know, uh, so, hey, I don't know. What you think? You think he should bring the list back? I think if he doesn't boss talk with him, one needs to drop you that list. To drop the list? <laughs> I, I, we can do it, though. Hey. Wow. Not really. <laughs> She's like, hell no. I don't want to be a part of it. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, it's cool. It's a conversation. Starting honestly, like, believe it or not, like, Whenever they do do it, it does shed light on some of the guys that deserve uh, to get shed light yeah, on. Yeah, no, you're right, exactly right. Familiar. So, like, I don't see nothing wrong in it. But, um, but nah, man, like, all those guys are influential. You know, from Rain to Bebe to everybody, man. So, I do believe, like, you know, even yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. Like, man, everybody's influential. <laughs> no, y'all, I mean, y'all are influential because y'all have the ability to shed light and amplify a situation. And that's a gift. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So as much as like I was calling him out and all that, like I really don't give a fuck to be honest. With you like if I see him, it's not gonna be like oh, fuck up. like come on, we gotta fight. Like that ain't nothing like that. <laughs> I was telling everybody, I was like, man, this shit ain't the Bloods and the Crips. It's the music industry. Like it's right. like if this is basketball and there's a ball on the court, and you know I feel I could beat you one on one. I'm gonna tell you I could beat you one on one. If I believe it, that's what it is. Whether or not people agree. Do you give him props from 03, man, and, and, the, and the job he did? Not only when he was alive, but after he passed away? I think he's doing a good job right now because I know that he recently reached out to somebody that I'm really close to see. This is the thing. He doesn't know how tied in I am, right? One of the records that he uh, that he played a part in, uh, you know, post-passing, right? I have it on my phone right now. Wow. See, this is the thing. Like, we all run in the same circles. So you got to respect people because you don't know how much we could work with each other and how we could benefit from one another. But maybe it's just not within his his realm of thinking that there's there's business to be done here, right? Uh, I do think he's doing the best of his abilities to maintain the legacy. During the time that he was alive, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really keeping up to that degree. Okay. Uh, but the fact that Mo 3... And, and again, like, I don't want to speak uneducated, but the fact that, you know, he has become, you know, um, a legend. A legend. He's huge, man. You know what I'm saying? People, uh, people hold him in that, that, that GOAT conversation now when it comes to artists that have come here. Anybody and everybody that was part of that, from Rain to Prophecy That's to my the boy. producers, our oh, Prophecy is my guy because you know visually he created the That's my guy. He created the look, the brand. Uh, there's a lot of people that play a part. They all deserve to be like you know celebrated in the sense that like they all played a part. Uh, so I don't know to the degree of you know the direction, the strategy. I don't know that because I. But yeah, but I just think it's a, a beautiful thing. You know how you know how being a manager in a situation mm -hmm. is. And you know so, what? I will never take that yeah. away from him because you know that's one thing that no one can ever say when it when history was written one way and one way only. Because I've heard people try to discredit him and say, "Man, the only reason that he's who he is is because of this artist." Like, nah, bro. Like the, the truth is, the story was written one way, and that's him and him together. That's the way it is. So no matter what you try to say or try to like, you know, diminish, that's the way it was written. Wow. Man, so <clears throat> you um also like when I look at your uh page, a lot of times you always in the inner city dealing with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I see you dealing with all the artists, man. But I don't know. Have I seen you with the row? Uh, the row got some heat coming this yeah, week. Yeah, the row just called me today, man. The row got yeah, some heat coming he, this he, week. Durow, His album coming out this week. The row called me. Actually, uh, I was eating about probably two, three hours ago. And okay. He called me and he was like, "Yo, man, what's up, man?" Because we had ran an interview. Good. We just didn't publish it, and I think he wants to run it back to to support the album. Of but course. The another guy, man. You know what, like. I don't, them artists in the city. Man, them I, I don't artists. know if people give him his just due his credit, but the one thing that I got to give the real credit for, and I told him this on the interview, is like, look, man, you had success as an artist, to your point, platinum artist, to your point, had some big singles, but also, man, above all, like when you talk about representing the city with integrity, you talk about represent, re representing the city the right way, you know, when's the last time you heard DeRoe in a beef, right? You, you know, don't, he don't move like that. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, and I think that should be, spoken about you know what i'm saying this is a guy that represented with with integrity took the city everywhere he went and never misrepresented or made us look like ignorant you know what no, i mean so true and i feel that should be at least spoken about when we talk about his legacy and what he's been able to contribute and maybe maybe in this era of clickbait and this era of music that that's what prevented him from going to the next stop you know what i'm saying like to the next step but maybe. what is the next step when you think about deals with 
able to pick up the phone and call Mark Cuban, able to pick up the phone and talk with Jerry Jones, able to collab and do things, uh, songs for those teams and stuff. Nobody else is doing that. For sure. And I think that's huge. I think we scale it from what sometime what others may think, but I think there's a scale inside of what he does that it really you gotta admire and you gotta respect it. I agree with you. I think when I say next step, it's not my point of view, it's probably this modern day uh, social media. That's what I was talking about. Like, That's exactly like, right. Because everything's, the numbers are glorified, yeah. right? The, the viewership is glorified. Uh, you know, I think up to a certain extent, like, you know, street cred is glorified in this era. You know what I'm saying? Where if you ain't been shot three times, you're not real. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, it's like, damn, dude. Like, if you ain't been to prison twice, you're not a real, damn. a real artist. And it's crazy how that 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 narrative is kind of shifted and, and kind of changed over the years. But man, I told the world, like, look, man, you never had any beefs. You 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 just, I mean, maybe he did competitiveness, but like, you never saw it and. He just did his thing and he worked hard, man. You got to admire that. You got to respect wow. that. It's a workhorse. I, I, I didn't know you guys. We talk as well. So he's just a dope dude, man. To yeah, he's a cool guy. Interact, yeah, he's a cool guy. Interact with. Um, so what's what's the next thing we, we doing as far as event planning? What's going on? Because you always have an event going. Last time it was Project Pat, which you didn't send him over here. <laughs> well, no, it, it was uh, DJ, it was DJ <laughs> Paul. Uh, three Six Mafia. Three Six Mafia. Did they all come? Uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> the ones that weren't live, yes. Okay. That's hard, man. Yeah, so, and I had Camilla there there as well. Yeah, come in there. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, I can't cool. stand you, man. That's what I'm talking about but right see, there, bro. But you know what? That's though, what I'm like, talking I, about. I tried, I you tried, see what I'm saying? I try to get The dude can. never <laughs> come out, bro. I got him out. You know, I tried to get him to do something, but like, you know, he didn't want to do nothing. <laughs> He didn't want to. He didn't want to do nothing. But no, I mean, like, I'm constantly doing tours. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just part of what I do. That's part of my company. You know, uh, right now on schedule. I have Soldier Boy coming up. Well, yeah, uh, September. I saw that. Uh, he supposed Boy. to come on Boss Talk. Don't don't play me, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Bro, you better put it in the contract. <laughs> this contract already contract drawn. Already the contract's drawn already, drawn already executed. But you know what? Man, have, give him a call, man. He he go. He owe me one. Big Draco, Soldier Boy. Me a, I, I guess I hit him up. He owe me one. So we got man. Soldier Boy. I got a few other shows, but I mean, you know, there's always thing, b things being added on. You know, like the the beauty of where I'm at is that I feel like I can move at my own pace. Uh, I also feel that I can navigate between different worlds. Like if I want to do Latin, I could do Latin. If I want to do hip hop, because that's really my passion and my love, I could do that at any given time. And, you know, as a buyer, I have relationships with agencies. I have relationships with, you know, managers and so on and so forth. So I'm always getting people pitching like, hey, do you want this tour? Hey, do you want that tour? Hey, do you want this tour? And it's become a lot more easier i think over the years to be able to do certain things because it used to be just for the record for those that are aspiring promoters or people that do shows it used to be like if you book a show to book an artist you have to put half the deposit down mm -hmm. to go on sale to, to promote the show to start going to work uh, i've been in a position where i'm very fortunate where i'm trusted i'm, I'm established i'm experienced you don't have to do that i, I don't have to put in most cases, anything done. Anything I just got to pay them the day of or or after, you know, mm -hmm. because they know I'm solid. And if I do put anything down, it's minimal. So it allows me to work a lot more freely. It doesn't, uh, you know, put all this pressure on me to where I have to have this money this day, this day. So, but I uh, got a question for you. When was the last time you did a Latin tour? I mean, technically, right now, the artist that I'm managing is, is on tour right now. We got like 23 cities, and he's Mexican American. I also have. A few other, uh, like, you know, I did the Latin Festival back in 2021. Okay. And, you know, I'll do it. I, what I'm doing now is some of the, out, like, some of the cities throughout Texas, because, you know, I've ran Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin in terms of touring pretty much the last several years. Like, I've done several shows there. I'm trying to focus on a little bit of more of the B markets, like the Lubbock's, the Amarillo's, the Odessa's, the Midlands, the, you know, the, the off cities that don't get that. Can you, put, can you put a big Tony, can you put a young Easy? can you put, what's the other guy name I asked you about earlier with B, Don, and G, Luck, T, uh, Mexican OT, Mexican OT, and what's the other one, it's one more, D, baby, and then, uh, and then the guys, in there. can you put them all together and, and make something happen working with those guys? I mean, I think there's a way to, I don't know that it, it, it'll, um, that'll be hard. I mean, I think like any other culture. You see what I'm saying? If you bring a wave like that through, they got to respect it. You know what's interesting about that is that I, I feel like I'm a bit disconnected from it. I understand it, but because I'm so locked into what I do, I don't always keep up with the new wave. Yeah. I'll catch on when I catch on. But I mean, you know, the one thing about our culture, like any other culture, I'm sure, we're very territorial. So when some of these guys get in position, 
and they feel like they have to be the only ones so they compete a lot with each other unnecessarily sometimes and the truth is is like you mentioned like you're right would you like point, to see it of course I would love to I think I think the people more than anything would like would to love see it. it yeah you know what I'm saying and I think it's time for stuff like that to happen but the likelihood of it happening it Slim would take someone like me to do it that's why I asked you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I have the energy or the want at the moment because I'm so, again, I'm locked into what I'm doing. Like, I have um, I have my own personal goals that I'm trying to achieve. Like, man, like, I'm 38 years old. I've been doing music a long time. I jumped in early. Um, I want to be, you know, if I'm not an executive at a, you know, if not a major label, if my own situation is not a major in the next five to 10 years, then I did something wrong, you know, because that's where I want to be. That's always been the goal is to be that, that level to where I'm signing talent, you know what I'm saying? I'm propelling talent. You know, I want to have multiple Grammys, multiple platinum records, you know, on behalf of the talent that I brought in. And, you know, the cool thing about what's happening with the artist right now that is having the success that he's having and Louis the singer is that I actually discovered Louis at 17 years old. And so, you know, now here we are, he's 33 years old. Most overnight success stories take 15 years and he's a living proof of that. Wow. And to see him having the success that he's having right now to the degree that he's having, man, I mean, I would have never guessed it, you know, cause we had a run, like our initial four year run. And then he broke off, did his own thing. I did my own thing. He went through some things, went to prison, got out. We, we reconnected, you know, we tried to do it again. Didn't really figure it out broke off again and then you know he got himself hot to all credit to him he figured it out and you know and i was doing my thing and we just connected at the right time because he you know he knew if i'm going to take this to the next step i have to have someone i trust i have to have somebody that i know that knows me uh that's respected because you know at this point you know you want once you get to a certain point in your career and in your life you the quality of people is massively important definitely and the quality of your peer group, the quality of your company, it, it becomes imperative in terms of growth. You yeah, know, now no, you got to be so like, true. man, look, if I'm going to level up, I got to be around bosses. You know what I'm saying? 100. I got to be at a, 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 and people that are, are masters at their craft because if you're hanging around with seven people, right? If you hang around with seven millionaires, then like the likelihood is going to be the eighth one. More right? than likely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the no, likelihood. No, that's the truth. You, you know, I, so, I want to ask you something else too. Uh, I, I know you've seen when uh, my boy uh, Big Pokey passed away. Like, um, you know, I know that's a tough loss for for age ten, for us because I used to love when he jump on these songs, Sensei and all that. I, I listen to all that, yeah. bro. And and it's just like to lose one that one like that. The way it went out, it was crazy for me. And, and you know, ESG had hit me up and told me. Hey man, this is real. This happening he, he, at three in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, what? I can't believe it, bro. So, I mean, just tell me your thoughts on Big Pokey and just what you thought of him as an artist. So, interestingly enough, um, me and Paul, Paul Wall. That's my boy, man. I really, like Paul Wall. We got, we got a really close relationship, and I'm really close to his manager, Goo. And when I say me and Goo talk all the time, yeah. he probably getting Paul over a hundred mm -hmm. days, hundred years ago, <laughs> and I ain't even had to stow that long. But look, I'm gonna tell you something. Goo and me talk, if not every day, every other day. You know, what tell I'm saying? him you was on Boss Talk. No, you know, so we've, we've talked yeah, about it. <laughs> Actually, I should say this on camera. Goo is my son. Uh, hey, son, <laughs> that boy. <yeah. laughs> nah, Goo's my guy. Okay, and we talk about everything. You know what I'm saying? But when the when the pokey footage first surfaced, yeah, I texted to him and then he texted to me. You, ironically, I, I think I IG DM'd him and then he called me. He called me. This is one thirty in the morning. Yeah, that's when it happened. So, this, this, so he calls me. This is before the passing had became public, and uh, we saw it. And you know, obviously, you know, he was Paul was with Pokey the week before in Odessa, so they had just did a show. But for me, when I woke up in the morning and I found out that he had passed, I didn't know Pokey. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I was the biggest fan of his music, but respect for everything that he's done. My initial thought and how I was impacted is I'm a heavy set dude. You know what I'm saying? And, and I saw Pokey on camera. Because, I mean, did you watch the actual footage? I did, but I didn't watch it many times. You know how I am. No, yeah. I cut so, it off. I mean, I felt he looked great. You know what I'm saying? In terms of compared to his weight prior. He looked, for me, he looked fairly in shape, you know, for, for his size. But to see him collapse like that was scary for me, being a heavy set guy. I'll be honest with you, man. I immediately just, that whole day I was drinking water because it's like, it was reported. I had been told that it was a heat stroke. 
from an inside source. Uh, but there was an, autop an autopsy that they're saying that it hasn't been revealed. Uh, they don't know what it is. I do know that there was some underlying conditions prior. I think he was in the hospital a few a few weeks prior with, with his heart. So maybe there was something there. Uh, but just knowing some of the people that are involved with his career, I, I know a few of these guys. I talked to him, like Sid, in, who happened to be managing him. Like we chatted recently. It, it's hard, man. It's hard, and it, it 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 sucks that it takes things like this to put not only life and mortality into perspective, right? But to to show appreciation to the degree that people show that appreciation to give people their flowers, you know. There was a lot of people that were releasing like, you know, here's like a special drink that we're gonna give all the proceeds to. Like, yeah, I get it, I respect it, but there's also this part of us like, man, why did it take for that to happen for him to see that to smell the roses, man? Why, you know, I know Paul, I know, I don't know Kiki personally like that, but and those guys have always Kiki, my guy, he called always, me all the time. I got them texts. Yeah, he's always showing the pokey love. You know what I'm saying? So it's a loss. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's and just man, tough, it's, man. It's unfortunate. I think I'm kind of. I, I think it hit different just being a bigger guy, a bigger guy. Not trying to be funny. Yeah, no, right? no, no, I get it. I because get it. because it, it, health is wealth. No, no, I get it because you can plan all this stuff, and if you don't have your, you know, you don't you don't keep yourself in a situation. Because one thing about it though, you can't scale. You know, one day you're here and then you're gone. Yeah. The next day you're gone. You know, um, that's a powerful song that that. UGK done and shout out Ronnie Spencer. Me and him talked that day. You know they all in the same same vicinity. The screwed up click, all that stuff, man. Will Lynch, all them boys. I talked to them and it's just like I just know that you know God is in control, man. And everybody, everybody got to get up out of here, bro. Everybody, I don't care how many. It's people that don't have no problem. They gonna go to sleep tonight. They ain't gonna wake up tomorrow, bro. Then nobody. They trying to figure out why. So it's just. It's just very important to get your house in order, bro. Yeah. yeah that's that's one thing I can mm -hmm. say. Don't you agree with that? It's mm -hmm. very important to get your house, get your in, house order, in order, bro. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, I just want to encourage everybody that hasn't gotten checked and that is overweight to have an understanding of, like, hey, you know, we're not we're not immortal, right? We're not, you know, at any given, like you said, any tomorrow's not promised. The next second's not promised. But I think, you know, health is wealth, you know, I... I I'm trying my best to, to to live by that, right? And, and doing my best to get things in order because being a heavy set guy and having people that I know personally, family, relatives, friends that are heavy as well, like, hey man, like, really gotta gotta watch ourselves because we don't know. And I don't even know if it was coordinated to that per se, but in that moment when I saw that video, that's what spoke that's to what me. That's what spoke to you because like, it called being a big guy. Yeah, I'm like, dog, like that could have been me, bro. You man. Know? Uh, so so who and and, and R.I.P. to uh, Big Poke and God bless his family, man. My condolences for sure. Absolutely. Um, who, but who coming up? You know, you do podcasts. Who's next, man? Like on the radar? Who would you like to interview? Man, I was very close to interviewing Fat Joe recently. I, man, I, that would have been hard. That yeah, would have been hard. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I would. I mean, I think who there's th that's a two part question. There's a part of it like who I have coming up, which isn't a lot because I kind of do it kind of on a per case basis, but who I want, there's a handful of people I want because like we talk about diversity. We talk about not having so much of one thing, right? So I would love to get, you know, Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford on there. That would have been huge you know what I'm saying now. Who's going to win that fight? Ah, that's a good question. I, you know what? Well, you better say the right answer. I'm gonna you say, don't have to. I'm going to say Terrence Crawford, right? What? Yes, I'm going to say Terrence Crawford. Are but you crazy? I'm Hold on, let crazy. me hear why. So I'm a boxing fan to the core. Had this been pre-accident, Earl, 1,000%, no questions asked. Earl has size, he has power, he's an efficient body puncher, and I feel that he just... He's a better fighter, and you know. They say he's back to what he used to be. No, nah, I don't. No, nah, that 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 affects you. That yeah, I I, I I think it affects you, but I still say that 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 it's not going to be no easy win. No, no, no. To just walk in there and just take. No, those not belts. at all. I, all four is he got four or five belts. I think it's four. No, it's so four belts. Crawford's just going to go in there and take all four of them belts like that and well, walk out. We'll walk right on. Out. I think Earl has three and Crawford has one. It'll be four total belts, but I feel that. Earl still has size regardless. No matter what, even now he still has size. I just don't know how he's going to respond and react whenever he gets hit, like, hard. And I do think there's going to be a point in that fight where he gets hit hard. And uh, I that's why I feel like 
Crawford is going to have a lot of advantages because I don't necessarily think he's going to knock him out, but I think it's going to he's going to fight conservative throughout the fight once that happens. What about uh, what if what if uh, Earl Spence comes in and walk him down with that jab? Round for round. I mean, it could happen. I mean, I I, I could see if him. If he get in a, in a rhythm and start walking him down, then what you gonna say? I mean, I'm gonna give him credit because I because <laughs> I because there's nothing I could, I don't dis I don't dislike Earl or think that Earl's not a great fighter. I think he's a great fighter. I, I'm gonna lean towards Bud Crawford this fight, but it's really because I feel Earl's not who he was personally. And there's no way like after a wreck like that, there's no way you can come back and be. Like how you were? Yeah, I mean, I, I had, you know, again, me being pretty deep into the box where I had heard around the way that there was rumors that, you know, it was more severe than what they let on or than they gave out, right? And if it is, like, we don't know. To me, when you see that car in the, in the, in the fashion that was, to me, it's hard to believe there wasn't some form of brain damage that occurred there. That's a that's crazy. So Yeah, but he, it threw him out early. He didn't, he didn't get to flip with the car. I don't know, man. He lost all his teeth. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. you know. Did he have veneers before? I don't know, but I know he has a whole new set of teeth. You know what I'm saying? So he, I mean, from what, what was it? What was reported? I don't know exactly the extent of it, right? It's, it's tough, man. Like I said, so when you start you know, looking at that kind of stuff, it really bothers you. But then it could be something deep down in him that's got to go mode that ain't trying to hear it. You know what? When he fought this last fight against Ugas and, you know, he got hit, I want to say in the sixth or seventh round and, he kind of got stumbled. It was weird to see that because it felt like there was a delay there. And I almost felt like he had some form of PTSD from the car wreck. And it just kind of makes me feel like, man, hold up. Like, something might be going on here. You know, because when he fought Danny Garcia and he came back, he beat the shit out of Danny Garcia, right? And I love Danny, by the way. But That's probably why you still got a problem bringing up this accident like that. Nah, not even. I, no, I'm just I, 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 he, but, but if I, he's that hurt, if he's that, you know, where... It might affect him like one terrible punch can really da if if it's you know damage him severely. Yeah. Like he has enough money where he can retire. Like why not retire? You know what? I feel this is his cash out. I personally feel like he's gonna fight Terrence. If they could stretch it out to three fights or two fights or however many fights, he's gonna make his money and he's out. I don't see no reason why he would fight anymore. To be honest with you, and honestly, I was in that I was in that group of people like had he chose to retire. You know, fuck it. Why not? You're 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 alive. You're intact. You're everything's right. good. You got your money, man. Because boxing is a brutal sport, it is. and it's not a sport that you're meant to be in long term. And if you are, it's really because you genuinely want to have uh, uh, this legacy. But you know, you see so many fighters that get older that are just a shell of themselves. You know what I mean? So, so you think, man? Shout out to. Floyd Money Mayweather. Man, that's, yeah. Floyd yeah. Money Mayweather. But you know what? He knew how to play it. To the Shout out to Floyd he, Money he, Mayweather. He got all of his, everything shit in time. Right, but man, Floyd. Hey, boy, hey pretty boy, Floyd. Floyd was, <laughs> he was the ultimate businessman and the ultimate chess player. <laughs> he knew what, he knew what he couldn't, couldn't do. And he, and he mastered it. You know what I'm saying? And you're right. You know, he got in and out. He, and he's still doing his thing. I um, mean, he's out there fighting. He'll fight <laughs> he'll you. He'll fight me right he'll now. He'll fight you right now. Right, right here, here for right. whatever. And, just, and do well, you know? So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I want to see the Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. Really, as a fan, I just want it to be entertaining. I want people to, to get, support get it. Get their money's worth. It's going to yeah, be huge money. I want money people to buy that, you know, two fighters in their prime. And if they could stretch, I want to see as many fights as possible. And hopefully both of those guys ride off into the sunset with a good payday because both of them have earned it. You know, they've mm -hmm. both worked hard. But if you're asking me, I'm going to go with Bud. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Top, top, uh, top, uh, top interviewers. And not just, I'm talking about from Joe Budden. I'm talking about oh, from Vlad. Oh, that's uh, such a Vlad. good question. Top I'm talking three? About for top, yeah, top three. I'm talking about for Vlad. I'm talking about for, for, Adam 22, I'm talking about from Matt Hoffa. I'm talking about from Sean Cotton, Boss Talk 101. I'm talking about from <laughs> all of the different podcasts, all the way down to Big Facts, uh, Beehive. Who is your top three of all time in interviewers, man? Well, see, that's, again, this is gonna... I said in interviewers, man. So it's yeah. it's a very tough one. Vegas? You can't put yourself in no, it. No, no, I wasn't going to You put can't put in. yourself in. You're like, I'm number one. Nah, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Would you, well, how would you layer it, man? Like it would be based on who I'm entertained by and what I like to see. How would you layer it? So I'm a big fan of the pivot. You know, pivot. Yeah, the boy's doing a good job. Great job, Ryan Clark. I feel is amazing. So he's the one really. He's the lead, 
right? Okay. Uh, so I love where those conversations go. Me being a, a sports fan, like I enjoy that. Ah, uh, man, it. I didn't put Club Shay Shay on there, Shannon Show. No, I would say Shannon. Actually, that's what I was going to say. I'm, so, I'm entertained by Shannon, and I love his style. I love the way he delivers. I love the fact that it's it's personable. Like, uh, So Shannon is probably somebody that I would put in, the, in that conversation as well. And, man, honestly, like... Number three. That's going to be the tough one, bro, because... You know, I, I do like Joe. I do like Joe Budden. Joe Rogan or Joe, Joe Budden? Budden. Okay. I do like Joe Budden. I do like whenever he has the actual pull-ups and those certain conversations, and I like where those conversations go. But, man, honestly, like Matt Barnes and all the smoke, those guys are really dope, too. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of them, man. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of them. You can't just start naming people. Nah, man, it's hard. Smooth Vega, you can't just start naming everybody, nah, man. man. I can't. I'll tell you the people that I don't like. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I really I wanted the top three because that's something we gotta we gotta look at. Who are your top three? What a, man, come on, man! You, if I'm gonna do top three interviewers, Charlemagne the God number one for oh, me. Oh, he's great. Yeah, number one. I don't think nobody touches Charlemagne when it come down to, and I don't even. I'm not cool with the other cast like that. Or whatever else yeah, going envy, on over there. Yeah, envy. I, envy cool, but he, I'm talking about Charlemagne. Just the way I've seen him go out and do things and present himself and and question people and go into those interviews. I like him. I like him a lot. I think he's hard. Um, shoot, man. I know who my number one is. Who? Uh, big Boy in the Morning. You like Big Boy? I like that. I like, I like Big Boy. I do like him. Whenever I watch his, man, dude, he did some dope fucking interviews. Like, I just watch a series of his interviews. And, man, he just knows how to mix it up. He knows how to get personal. Yeah. He knows when to be funny. He knows how to, like, man, he's just, man, he's, yeah, he's, for me, he's a master interviewer to me, and I'm a I'm, and I'm a huge huge fan of. I love the Carlos Miller, eighty five South. I'm mm. with them. I love the laid backness of it. I love the country boy style. You know what I'm saying? So when I see them guys do their thing, and to come from where they come from, I rock with them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who else? Who would I say number three? Who would you? I let you pick the third. Who would you pick? I really don't. know. You might pick a female. Who's Ain't the, no females like that. You the only female. Miss Jamaica, that's going to be my number one at all times. Yeah, there you go. 20 years will be my number one. There you go. Ain't no number one there except for her. But at the end of the day, I, I don't know. The third one, like you said, the third one's hard. Um, uh, definitely, you know, like I say, I look at all these people, man, and they just having conversations. If I interview them, one of them, they're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I mean, because you want to get certain conversations out of people. Yeah, like, but yeah. I do. I mean, I don't. I Joe Button. I like Ariel Hawani. Joe be tripping, man. Dude. Joe, Joe, that's your boy because you came up with him. Joe, <laughs> Joe just Joe like to have fun and and target practice. He out there just shooting at whatever move. Joe was academic, bro. Yeah, Ariel Hawani. Uh, he's academic, dope. bro. Academics. Um, you can't be mad. at Ak can bring some noise. He can make stir some things up. Bro, but I enjoy the sports guys that you do. You like, go out of sports guys? Yeah, I like Mike Tyson's Was fucking... Was you mad when Skip and, and Shannon kind of went their separate way? Ah, oh, man, <laughs> dude. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I, I, I've i been watching ESPN really my whole life, right? So you're talking about... I was a big fan of Part of the Interruption, right? You're talking about Michael Wilbon, Tony Kornheiser, religiously every day. They, they, that shit got me through some things, right? And then first, it was cold pizza, then it turned into first take. So I was there through all the variations of, you know, Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless. When Skip left ESPN, everybody thought, like, yo. It's over. No, I mean, they, they, yeah, they were like, oh, yeah, he ain't going to last at FS1, right? You know, because FS1, ain't it ain't as attractive as ESPN. And he went out there and he created a show. With Shannon Sharp, who I don't think a lot of people gave, you know, they didn't give him a dog in the fight. You know, they didn't think he was going to be. And he killed it. Man, I mean, he, he he's definitely worth a lot more than what he than he was when he came in. He killed it. And uh, I I don't think there's been a point in time since that show was on the air that I like First Take more than Undisputed. I love Undisputed. And I, it became part of my daily routine. I love watching it. So when I saw them kind of go their own ways, I mean, you, if you kept up with the show, you knew it was coming because... It was getting a little disrespectful on, on, on screen. But, I mean, Shannon 
Shannon's going to go on to have massive success. And he's mm-hmm. about to get a big contract, whether it's from ESPN. ESPN just did major layoffs this last week. Oh, yeah. They're cleaning up that cap. They're ready to cut that yeah. check. And if he doesn't get it from them, Amazon's going to get him for sure mm-hmm. because Amazon's making a big, big, you know, push towards sports. But, yeah, I was definitely disappointed because they had a chemistry, man. And I feel that a lot of people gave Stephen A. Smith a lot of credit for the, uh, the success of, you know, first take and the chemistry that him and Skip did or Skip had or whatever right and they did have great chemistry but if Skip can replicate that chemistry with someone else and in a lot of ways connect even more because you know Shannon was really kind of talking You're hanging out over Lil Wayne house I don't think that's gonna do it yeah man I feel like with, I feel like with Shannon bro, you think even Lil Wayne could do something nah <laughs> nah nah Nah, Shannon was just, man, Shannon was... Shannon's special, man. I keep not telling don't try. Shannon come from nothing like me, so I, that's why I know he came from uh, houses where it rained, and like he said, all his mom and grandma say, if you get him something where it can rain hard as it can, it won't rain mm-hmm. on her head. i never forget that speech, because I come from the country. Yeah. So to hear him say that, man, it's, it's just hard, man. What about... I got a question. I, hold on, I want to say, let me shout out my boy, Big Court, too, because he got a smooth, smooth uh, platform over there. Mm-hmm. And and, and you have you watched Holding Court? I haven't. I you really gotta jump in the Holding Court, man. Yeah, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm still stuck on the Shannon shit because, man, that. Because did you watch what happened with him? Whenever uh, it, it was they, a hurtful situation, wasn't it? Whenever, I mean, he was, a, he was really, uh, you know, he was, he was about was to scream, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, bro, I can't do that. What bro. was wrong with Skip? And man, why it was, was it was just mad? It was, you know, why did Skip say that? Like you wasn't because it all started with the Demar Hamlin situation with Demar, DeMar Hamlin. But Skip say you, you, you couldn't be, and he's like, man, I'm a Heisman Trophy. Yeah, I'm a, man. yeah, I'm a fucking Hall of Famer, bro. Like, what is you talking? about? Yeah, bro. Like, this shit is crazy. Bro. What did you think about it? You thought Skip was wrong or you thought Shannon was wrong? No, I think Skip was 100% wrong. It, it kind of had a little bit of that, that tone and like, yo, man, you're, you're Don't te- do that. You're teetering that line. You're teetering that line. You're teetering that line, my boy. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You better don't say don't do that, though. No, it yeah, can't be that yeah, way up there. Yeah, On them know. levels, it's yeah, still going. Yeah, man. I can't believe Go ahead, baby. No, I was just curious because I know that um, in today's society, I'm seeing a lot of... Um, Entertainers wearing, and even entertainers, I see regular guys doing this too, wearing nail polish on their fingers. <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, damn well, you uh, I mean, yeah, colored. I know you didn't come on here with no I mean, damn nail. Colored right? nail Smooth polish. Baker, you came on with some damn nail. Let me see your no, nail. No sir, no sir, no, no Drake, sir. Drake no, did sir. it. Re- Drake did it. I can't wear it. I don't give a pink. damn about you know, Drake. What Drake? I don't asking. give a damn what Drake did. I'm from the old school. I'm you asking know, what I, you I, think. I think to to kind of echo his statement, I'm from the old school, right? So like, I try, I try my hardest to understand like what's current fashion. It's hard for me to understand it sometimes, you know what I mean? It's hard for me to understand, like, yo, this is what this is what people do now, right? Um, I wouldn't wear it. Um, I wouldn't want my son to wear it. Yeah, right? I was about to say, if your son come around the corner and have on that, what would you say to him? It depends, man. I don't know, man. I don't know what I would do, honestly. <laughs> I would, I would, because I love my son regardless. I'll sit down and talk to him. I've been like, what, what's going on? Like, what's the? But trend? what does it represent? Does it really? I don't represent really know what we think it represents. No, or no, no. I don't think what? so because, like, let's just say, like, you know, there was a period of time where there was like that goth look that was right. The hard rock, the metal rock, rock. Rock. the chains, right. the long hair, the black nails, like exactly. You know what I'm saying? So like, it really depends on the content. Like, if mm-hmm. he's wearing like pink nail polish. Drake just did the pink, but I'm thinking when I, I see know. Drake wearing pink, I'm like, you trying to promote something with your yeah, music? He, he, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, thinking. He, he, he reaching, you know. Yeah, these guys do. It must be for the drop something because that's that's, that's what I'm thinking. Doing weird stuff like that. It's for, it's for reaction. Yeah, right. it's for a reaction. You want to get everybody to watch him, and 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 you know the game. You you probably you you up there with the execs, so y'all VPN it, telling people to do this and do that, so we can get it popping. Yeah. I get it. I and get then it. My next question to you is: Okay, you're into sports and you love sports. Do you like Michael Jordan? Fucking of course. <laughs> of course. LeBron, um, bro, don't even ask me that question. That's <laughs> that's just, that hurts me to even even be asked that. Like. Yes, 100%. I love him more than LeBron. I can answer that question without a doubt. People will make the argument, and I've said this on interview. I actually, um, me and Bun B had this conversation. I said, you know, it's crazy to me that never in my lifetime, because every era that comes in, right, every generation that comes in wants to believe that their generation was better than the mm-hmm, previous generation. Mm-hmm. And there's no arguing. These young mm-hmm. kids are going to say our generation's better. Yeah. It is what it is. But that's what they know. 
But God, man, like I never in my lifetime would have thought that somebody would question Michael Jordan's greatness. And you go on Twitter now, you go on Instagram now, there's people that are like, Jordan played against plumbers and he had Scotty. And all of a sudden now Scotty Pippen is the greatest player of all time. He had Scotty Pippen to carry him. And I'm just hey, like, no, him and Scotty oh, Pippen, they were good Scottie on the court. Pippen, well, and then Scottie, they had Scottie their Pippen. riff. No, they Scottie had their Pippen. riff. But Scottie. then recently, recently he was posed the question because, you know, Scotty Pippen, not Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan's son. Yeah. 32 Scottie's years wife. old. Is, 32 years old is dating Scotty Pippen. Wife. Ex-wife. Yeah. That's, fine. That's, that's fine, but I'm just telling you. And they you, asked Jordan if he uh, liked it, and Jordan was like, mm. It don't matter. All, all that I'm telling you is, Scottie Pippen and them, you know, it was a team around them. You got Lonely, you got a Kerr, you got, really? you got some real, really? you got some people That's what you're going to say? No, I like them, <laughs> man. Like, I ain't going to sit there and say when they didn't count at all, bro. You have to have a team out there. I mean, the same thing goes for LeBron. He had yeah. Chris Bosh and no, Dwayne Wade. I'm a Michael Jordan fan, so I'm just telling you that... <laughs> Pippen wasn't the only one when you made that oh, statement. No, I'm just saying. I, it was I'm some guys that around him. Rodman really was more of a distraction than all of them dudes. Well, right? look, I'm talking about what the internet says. I, yeah. When I see this and I've seen people questioning Jordan's greatness, I'm like, this is, I can't even find the words to describe. Like, he would have won eight straight championships had he not retired during that little period where he decided to go off and play baseball. He would have won eight straight. The Rockets would have never won those two championships, for sure. Three, two years off, and then won three. You know what I'm saying? Like That's my opinion. He ain't playing about joy. Nah, you know, I wasn't even a Jordan fan. I started watching the NBA in 1992 because of Shaquille O'Neal. I'm a Shaquille O'Neal fan. He's my favorite player of all time. Really? Shaquille O'Neal is the reason why I fell in love with basketball. I started watching basketball when Shaquille came in the league, and I retired whenever Kobe retired. I haven't watched basketball since Kobe retired, but I know everything about basketball in that era. So Shaquille, I wanted the Orlando Magic to win the, the championship whenever they knocked out the Bulls. It was the best feeling in the world to see you know, Horace Grant being hosted on the shoulders at, at, at the United Center, like, ah, oh, we just won. It was, it, to me, it was great, you know, because I, I was Shaq and Penny all the way. But, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta, I mean, you got to respect the greatness. Jordan's six for six, man. He won six man. championships. He won He won six finals. LeBron has lost six finals. Man, what's the name of your podcast? The Smooth Vega Podcast is officially the name of it. You know, I was doing Nothing Beats Experience, so you can find some episodes under that, or quite a bit, actually, the majority of them are under that. But I changed it at the beginning of the year, make more of a branding move, focus more on my, my, my personal brand, something I wasn't always comfortable with. You know, like, I, I speak about this now pretty openly, but I feel like... There was a part of me that suffered from imposter syndrome, and when people hear the word imposter syndrome, they think that that means like you're 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 an imposter. No, it's like no, bro. Like that's you know a deeper think a diff, a deep a deeper deep dive into psychology where a lot of people view you as this big person, but you don't view yourself as that. You feel like you're not good enough, you're not doing enough, and I, I was a victim of that. Like I didn't feel like everybody was like, man, you doing it big, you doing it big, and I'm like, man, I ain't doing it big enough. Wow. And now I, I'm finally comfortable within my own skin. I'm comfortable owning that, yo, this is who I am. This is what I represent. This is what I mean to my to my community, to my city, to my people, to my neighborhood. You know, I've said it openly, man. Like, I feel I'm the best at what I do. And, and that's not no knock against anybody. That's the self-belief that I have to carry to be able to continue to push forward. Year round, I speak at schools, you know, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. I've spoken at TCU to a group full of students. You know, you're talking about someone that did not graduate high school. People wow. that they told were just never gonna make it. I was expelled out of school in seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th grade for just basically being someone that wasn't disciplined. I didn't like taking authority. I talked back. And to overcome all those obstacles, to be someone that now is a gatekeeper, uh, you know, someone that's, you know, paving the way, someone that's out there, you know, giving back to the neighborhoods, to the, giving back to the community, you know. Every year I do an annual toy drive where I race toys, and I've been doing this now since 2007, 2008. I've raced thousands and thousands and thousands of toys over the years. I do a free community event every Christmas, and I give back to, you know, the less fortunate or, you know, the people that don't have it during that time. Like, I take a great deal of pride in what I do, Man. and, you know, what, what what's your uh give me your handle on IG man how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link up mm -hmm. you know they know a show coming they want to be a part of it's just all smooth vega you know S M O O T H V E G A 
Facebook, Smooth Vega 85. Just look me up. You'll find me. Smooth Vega, man, been on Boss Talk 101 a year later, man, doing his thing, man. We love this guy, man. And this guy right here, man, uh, listen, if you come through the city, you got to stop and rock with him. Thank man. you, sir. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, Smooth Vega, one of those guys, man, the gatekeeper list. Uh, him and him and uh, Mogul Media Partners, though, don't get it twisted. <laughs> I know that. I'm not even going to play with y'all, but they dope. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Man, you already know. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much.